Yes, yes, Kenya. Tamu sana, tamu sana, tamu sana, yes. There is a viral video where Boni Aluale, former Kakamega senator, is adversely mentioned. Yes. So in this video right now, I want us to have a look at that short clip. After which, as usual in this YouTube channel, we are going to dissect it and see exactly, in clear terms, what it means politically. What it means. So if in case you've just bumped on this YouTube channel for the very, very first time, very first time, kindly subscribe, give this video a like. Give it a like, please. Give it a like. Thank you. God bless you. Let's have a look at this short clip. From that short clip, we can see four gentlemen seated. And it seems to appear they have just called for a press statement and they are just starting. And their grievances, they want to put, up, put forward their grievances to William Ruto. And their grievances is as a result of one person, Bonnie Aluale. They are just not happy with the way Bonnie Aluale is organizing things in Uda as far as Kakamega is concerned. So as they are starting, a gentleman there donning an Uda t-shirt comes and disrupts the press statement. And the reason why he's disrupting that press statement, he doesn't want Boni Aluale's name to be mentioned. And he claims that he's not only alone, but there are many. So they don't want those gentlemen there to hold a press conference and also to mention Bonnie Alwale's name. Yes, that's where we have reached as Kenyans. That's where we are politically. Yes. What does that show or what does, what does it mean politically? As far as Bonnie Alwale's influence in Oda and in Kakamega in, is concerned, as far as Tangatanga brand of politics is concerned, and also as far as Boni Aluale's gubernatorial seat, rather race, is concerned. That's our analysis. Having looked at the thing carefully and very keenly, I believe that there are six things that comes out watching at that short clip. Six things, ladies and gentlemen. The first thing that comes out clearly is that Boni Aluale, Boni Aluale, it seems not to be very, very strong in order, and as far as among order supporters in Kakamega are concerned, those people they are complaining are order supporters in Kakamega, and they are complaining to William Ruto about Boni Aluale. So it seems that Boni Aluale is not very, very strong in order party as far as order supporters in Kakamega are concerned. And then secondly, it also appears that Boni Alwale's influence or other political clout in Kakamega is also at question, or rather is also questionable, simply because I tend to believe that for Boni Alwale to make a serious stab at Kakamega gubernatorial seat next year, he must first consolidate other supporters in Kakamega County fully behind him and then he goes out to convince those who do not subscribe to other ideals to also vote for him. But if he cannot even convince or rather consolidate other supporters to be behind him, how will he convince those who do not subscribe to other brand of politics in Kakamega to support him? I tend to believe that Boni Alwale's influence in Kakamega as a whole is shaky. And that paints a bleak picture for his gubernatorial race next year, as far as Kakamega is concerned. I tend to believe his gubernatorial race next year, if that clip is anything to go by, is just but a pipe dream. A pipe dream. Because that we've just been exposed to that, that small clip, or rather, that, that short clip. And we don't know the kind of complaint that maybe residents of Kakamega might also have against Bunyadwali.
So to me, from where I sit, I can authoritatively confirm that Boni and Wale is largely not popular in Kakamega County. The second thing that also comes out clearly, looking at that young man there, I am disrupting that press statement. He, is, he seems to me not to be a youth. He is a man at averagely old, maybe even in his early 40s there, or maybe late 30s. That's not a young man, ladies and gentlemen. And for him to state that he's ready to die for Boni and Wale, that's laughable. And it's not only laughable, but it's the height of stupidity and a fatality. Height of stupidity. If somebody can die for Boni and Wale, Boni, this one Boni and Wale, who does not have anything or any cause to die for, you want to die for Boni and Wale. Well, Boni Alwale has no cause or reason to, or anything to die for. Then it just shows that some of Kenyans, or rather some of our Kenyan brothers, they take long to grow up, rather to mature mentally. <laughs> because even Boni Alwale himself, looking at his brand of politics, I don't think, and this is my honest opinion, I don't think Boni Alwale from where I sit, his political future is not all that promising because he has come out as somebody who does not have a clear stand. He was just calling for Rupto impeachment, Ruto must go, and now he's singing and praising William Ruto. That to me shows Boni Alwale has no cause to die for. He lacks a clear stand. The third thing that comes out clearly, ladies and gentlemen, is that Tanga Tanga. Uda, Wilbaro, they seems to me as a moribund outfit. A moribund outfit. An outfit that can die or collapse anytime, anytime. Because if, if their disagreements can come out in public, and this is not the first disagreement we have seen, almost on a daily basis, we are always treated to some drama in Tanga Tanga. So according to me, it's just a matter of time before we can see some serious hemorrhage of leaders out of Uda and out of Tanga Tanga, out of Wilbaro. Yes. To me, that comes out very, very clearly. This is a moribund outfit, and it's just a matter of time before it collapses and dies before our own eyes. Another thing that comes out clearly from that thing, it also exposes Politics of greed and intolerance. Politics of greed and intolerance. It seems to me, or rather it appears to me, that Boni and Wale, he might be supporting William Ruto for some personal gain that he's getting from William Ruto. And that personal gain, he seems not to share it with others. He seems to be eating it alone. So others are complaining. Others are complaining. So it also just exposes politics of greed and intolerance. That as he eats that maybe what he's getting from William Ruto, as he eats it alone, he doesn't want others to complain. So if you complain, he sends goons to attack you. That's politics of greed and intolerance. It comes out very, very clearly watching at that short Another thing that comes out clearly, ladies and gentlemen, is lack of integrity in our political leadership. Lack of integrity. You know, in chapter 6, we are told leadership and integrity. And for quite some time now, we have been seeing Tanga Tanga leaders doing all sorts of things that just proves that a majority of these leaders subscribing to this Tanga Tanga outfit they fail the test, or rather they lack integrity. We saw Didmas Baraza slapping a young man who had done some contractual jobs in his constituency. And again here we are seeing Boni and Wale most likely, I tend to believe he paid those, that young man there huh, to go interrupt, or rather they disrupt huh, that press statement. If Boni and Wale can pay somebody to disrupt or rather to block others from talking, then it means it's infringing 
on the rights of others to air their views. And to me, that proves beyond any reasonable doubt that also Bonnie Alwale fails that test of leadership and integrity. Yes, that comes out very, very clearly. Another point that also comes out clearly, ladies and gentlemen, is that Tanga Tanga is not an organized outfit, not organized and not stable. The mere fact that those, those people, the ones calling for the press statement, felt it was good to come out in public. It just shows that Tanga Tanga lacks some clear structures through which party members or supporters can channel their views or grievances. Tanga Tanga seems to lack that, those structures. Or if they have those structures, then they're not democratic. So to me, it appears, it seems to appear that Tanga Tanga is not an organized political outfit. It lacks clear structures that grievances can be aired. Because largely, all these things we have been witnessing in the recent past, they seem all to be emanating from Tanga Tanga. An indication that Tanga Tanga is still not yet an organized political outfit. So how will they run the government if they cannot even organize their own party? A small party like Uda, they can't organize it properly. How will they run the government? And as I also conclude, I'm fully convinced, ladies and gentlemen, that this leader subscribing to Tanga Tanga movement and likely to the Tanga Tanga leadership, these are people who all fail the test of leadership and, and integrity. None of them qualifies, right from their party leader or at their boss to the lowliest of the person in the other party. Otherwise, ladies and gentlemen, I don't have much for today. Let me leave it there. But before I leave it, let me just remind you that if you've just bumped on this YouTube channel for the very first time, subscribe, give this video a like. If you are watching us for the very first time outside Kenya, drop a comment. Let us know from which part of the globe you are watching us from. Our continued fans and subscribers are very, very much humbled with the kind of support here you are giving me on a daily basis by constantly giving our videos likes and also by constantly dropping your comments. God bless you. God bless Kenya. Tamu sana. Tamu sana. Tamu.